know, some might say that Hollywood's becoming incredibly desperate now. It was, of course, the place, wasn't it, that we all love to watch and all that sort of stuff, when you think about it. The golden age of Hollywood, I know, is what I talk about. And I've been so lucky to meet so many of those wonderful people who were part of that golden age, you know, the likes of Anne Miller, Mickey Rooney, Debbie Reynolds, Tony Curtis, Robert Vaughan, so many that, you know, really made what we now watch on our screens, whether it be on a, an iPad or indeed a computer, or still on the TV. We loved it, didn't we? We believed those stories, you know? It doesn't matter what you uh, like, what genre you like. People like, for instance, Cla Casablanca with the brilliant Humphrey Bogart, but it could be just something as fun and frivolous as How to Marry a Millionaire with Lauren Bacall, Betty Grable, and Marilyn Monroe. It was escapism, glamour, the only thing that you could literally, well, dream away with. But there was another side to Hollywood. Yes, let me explain. Hi, nice to see you. Thank you so much as ever for your time today. Isn't this gorgeous here? Just look at that, you see. Beautiful autumnal scenes. When I'm standing here in a couple of months' time, I'll be saying, it's freezing, and you'll be agreeing with me. Well, I know, I can sense it already. Yes, well, it's a little windy now, I know. Time to get those thermals ironed, I think. I'm not embarrassed to say you should have thermals. Best thing going, in my opinion, that and a hot water bottle. I believe, <laughs> I'm sharing this with you now, but I believe the old things are the best. You know, it's all very well with these modern gadgets and hand warmers and stuff like that. Yeah, they might work, but a warming hot water bottle, nothing like it, is there? I know. It's a little bit like this particular story I wanted to share with you, because as Hollywood is now struggling to get people to go into the cinema, the recent um, thing with Lady Gaga and Joaquin Phoenix, uh, the Joker, was an absolute bomb. But, you know, again, I blame the marketing and the PR they invited me along to the red carpet, you know, and I said, well, I'd need an interview. Oh, no, no, we're not doing that. Basically, they didn't think, you know, it was, oh, no, well, you can just do the red carpet. You didn't please yourself. Then the movie bombs. I'm not saying that's down to me, but you kind of look at it and think it looked boring. But now Hollywood had decided, of course, to go down a totally different route. You see, remember when we were younger and you had those weird films that we now laugh at, but are what they call cult things. You know the sort of thing I mean. You know, the incredible shrinking woman, the 50-foot woman. King Kong, The Mummy, The Blob, all of those great sort of what they call B films that I often think are better than the A movies as they call them. Even now when you look at some of the old British B films, the stories are far better on a cheaper budget. I think it's because and, you know, let me know what you think to this in the comments below. But I think when you look at the stories of the B films, they were more relatable. You know, you understood the story. You think, yeah, I've been there. I would do that. And it's about, say, a woman in crisis or a man on a murder hunt. And it was more believable than, say, some of the swashbuckling things like the robe or stuff like that. You know, you think, mm, not particularly me. But now Hollywood have decided, and I wanted to you know, share this because I want to know what you think to this. Apparently, Hollywood have decided that they are now going to be making as A movies some of the B movies that were so successful way back when, particularly from companies like American International. They did a lot of those sort of fun movies that literally people laughed at, but went, of course, to the drive-ins and watched them and thought, wow, these are good fun. And what was your favourite B movie? Do let me know in the comments below. I told you a while back about a movie with the brilliant actress Joan Fontaine called Born to be Bad. And it was a brilliant movie. A bit high drama, you know, melodrama, bit soap opera. I'm not sure if it would work today simply because it was in a time. And when you've got mobiles and stuff like that, it wouldn't necessarily stand the test of time. But is there a B movie that you think would stand the test of time or that you thoroughly enjoy and want to let us chums know and why we should watch it? I'd love to know, truly. Neil Sean in the very heart of Kensington.